And what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here checking in on our little 3D print operation for today. If you're new to the channel or uninitiated, I do 3D printing here at home. Stuff for my life around the house, stuff that's cool, stuff to sell on the internet, everything all at once in one place. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along in the process. Maybe you can learn something from my dodo brained errors that I make. Let's check in what I got on the plates and what's going on. So a bit absent from the 3D print thing here, at least vlogging about it. So several things going on in the farm. First thing I want to address, and it's probably, I haven't made a thumbnail or a title for this vlog yet, but it's probably gonna have to do with the Orange Storm Giga because if you've been following my channel, you know I have an Orange Storm Giga here. I've had a lot of problems with it. The last big problem was my, you know, error not plugging it back in. But there was a more fundamental problem that made me change out the, the extruder or the nozzle rather. Uh, and so when I went back into print, it was seemingly working okay. And that's when, the, per the last episode, I was doing a Charmander model. So the Charmander did fail. Let's take a look at that failure. All right, and so this Charmander, you can see it's quite large, about 18 inches tall. Uh, when I was vlogging about it previously, it was just getting into the print. And the next day I came back and you could see here um, that it did fail. And there are two pieces here. It failed all along the same line. So I'm not sure if maybe it failed in one particular part that caused it to just kind of telegraph throughout. But I don't think that's the case because here, like say on the top, the back of his head, you can see this failure all around the rim, but then it starts to continue afterward and it seems to be okay after the fact. Same sort of thing here on the top of his arm. It's not even layer shifted. Um, and then here on the body, obviously, it's just as if it stopped extruding here for a while, but then started again. And it's somewhat connected in some areas and then just completely not in others. Now, so I know I don't have any infill in here, and this is, I believe, it might've been three or four even wall loops, just to kind of sort of soften out some of the gaps that I was getting. Uh, looking at the other piece too, same issue, same layer height all the way through. So if I kind of match them up here, you can see that the error occurred, you know, obviously it occurred at the same layer throughout the model. So I thought, Okay, here we go again, because this is a brand new nozzle and there was no clicking. I talked about the clicking last time. The clicking went away, didn't have any issue with it. And I printed all of these under cabinet panels without any issue. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just try, try again. Pulled that off, started the print again. Let's go look at that one. All right, and so here we are, as you can see, it failed. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's at the same layer height. If we're comparing it, I uh, don't want to get this spaghetti caught up in the printer, let's move her up. All right, so if we're looking at it here, if you remember last time the back of his head, it starts to get a little gappy here, but it doesn't look like the failure really occurred until almost where it finished the back of his head, like that top layer, and then it started doing the same issue. It's as if maybe the filament gets caught up or it can't pull it or something like that. Cause someone mentioned that, like maybe it's just too much weight for the extruder to pull and then it's just not feeding filament. It's not extruding. The only thing is, is that this spool is, it, it started out pretty light and there's really nowhere that I can see resistance. Like, you know, I play with this thing, pull on it and it's just not like it's, it's not that much. And this is a, you know, this extruder is just sized to pull five kilo spools through a pulley off the floor. You know, I've seen plenty of people do that. So I'm not, I'm thinking maybe that it is a problem with the extruder, obviously. Um, I'm thinking maybe I just swap out the extruder in and of itself versus keep trying to troubleshoot this because this is burning a lot of filament to, to mess around with this. You know, I think like maybe it's like file corruption or something like that. And you know, sure, like I could do a better job on the slice, um, like more wall loops or whatever to get a higher quality surface finish. I also ran this with that with zero uh, bottom shell layers because if I'm gonna glue them together, I thought I don't need a bottom shell. I could just print it like this. And it was coming out fine. It was printing without issue because like the first, you know, 100 some odd, 200 layers look great. And then it just completely whiffs. And you know, that was kind of the issue that was occurring last time. Print looked good until it didn't. And then it just, you know, it, it missed one or two layers and then it's over. I'm looking around on the machine for any signs of like it bumping into anything at a certain height. 
Um, it just doesn't make sense to me because it, it happens at different layers. It just uh, gets to a point and then everything goes to shit. So I think for the Armstorm Giga, I think my next step is to just get a new hiding because they're like $60, I think, for a, just a, a complete new unit. That way I can get it in, put it back into service, and I'm uh, totally confident that it's not gonna present any sort of issues if I pop in a new extruder because I think this is extruder related not software related or anything like that. And that way I can have this other one to take apart, tinker with, clean out very meticulously and have it as a backup in case the new extruder does that. So that's kind of what I did with the Cobras uh, before. I, I do that with the bamboo as well. I think that's the best course of action. But before I do that, I am gonna run one print through this. You know, it's not all bad. We wanna look on the bright side because this plastic is gonna feed so many ocean going creatures. It's just going right into, I actually might might put it in my local freshwater uh, nearby. Before we look at that next Giga print, what have I got going on the other printers? Well, it was a tale of two Charmanders. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It, usually the worst of times. Uh, so obviously this is a second Charmander. I had going over here on the bamboo, the P1P. This is a piggy bank and it's just a regular like off the shelf model off of Maker World, I think. Uh, I got it to like put in my stores. I thought you know, maybe someone would like a Charmander piggy bank. It was a little more filament than I would have liked because it was like it came out to with all the color changes and everything, something like 700 grams. And so I'm doing the math in my head and I was like, you know, if I can only fit one on a plate and if it's like 700 grams, then it's like, okay, it's gonna cost me like eight, nine dollars to print this. I put it in a store. How much can I realistically expect someone browsing through a store to pay for a Charmander piggy bank? Like maybe as a gift or something. But you know, like $20, I'm just not making it. It's not really meaningful money, uh, but it is like an option. It keeps the printers moving. Um, that is of course, if it finalizes the print, which it didn't <laughs> of course, because over here on the AMS, it just decided to, and I haven't touched this thing yet. I was waiting to film to see how bad it was because I glanced in there and said, whoa, Nelly. Um, let's, let's see. The white obviously got a little spaghettied up. All right, you can see there. <laughs> Oh man, okay, so that, that is a new one. Um, that went all through the core, I guess when it was back winding or something. Um, you know what, I suspect that it may be the roller. No, because I noticed the rollers here were getting a little worn because I had just taken this apart to service it, um, but obviously, that's not gonna work out. So the BAM, but the P1P is, is uh, slated for something else. So we're gonna work on that too. We're gonna come back or never again with the Charmander thing. It was kind of just a, a busy print. Over here on the A1, we have something that maybe has potential. So this, I'll put a screenshot right here. This is a wall art piece and it's a test print before I go on the Giga with it. It's uh, if, assuming the Giga works. Because again, for in my stores, people like pop culture-y type stuff. And I was just kind of looking around for something really basic for the Giga to do because these complex prints, I, I'm just trying to reduce the number of like movements that the Giga has to do. This is a Darth Vader uh, wall art piece. It's just kind of like this, these slats that kind of give you this, I forget, there's a name for it. If you know the name for what I'm describing here, let me know in the comments below. But it probably says in the title of the Maker World thing. I'm gonna be in editing, like that's what it's called when I'm sitting here talking about it. And I'm still talking about it. Anyway, doing a test print here on the A1, it's a lot of wall loops because of like the nature of the model. But I'm just testing it out, seeing how it comes out. And then if it comes out good, I replace the extruder on the Giga. Then I can do it there really big. And you know, I think people might like that. People like Darth Vader and all those kind of things. So it's, just kind of a very simple art piece. Put it up in the store, maybe someone will buy it, maybe it's like a $100 hauler type thing. It is gonna take a lot of filament on the Giga though because of just so many wall loops, you can't get around it. It's probably gonna be like four kilos worth of filament, so I'd need to fetch that $100, $120, $130 uh, price point. But it is very simple. It's a crowd pleaser, it's a fan service type print. So. That should be going on the Giga here soon, assuming the test model comes out all right. Let's see what else I'm really excited about and working on now. All right, and if you recall from last vlog, my dear friend Andrew, the uh, print dad, uh, I was doing one of his prints. He has a Thangs profile, you, you know, Thangs. You subscribe to a, a designer, you print their stuff and you sell it, you get rights to it so long as you 
paid the fee and he told me I could sell a few of these. Um, I probably don't plan on selling these, but I did want to print, uh, you know, some of exhibition prints to kind of show it off. And, you know, if you're a designer, you sell memberships or whatever, hit me up, emails in the description. I'm very glad to print it and plug you just kind of as a, you know, something to do, I guess. Uh, but this, the Nuka-Cola Magic the Gathering card holder thing, I could have swore I had the magnets to put this together. I don't have the dowel pin for it, but uh, I imagine any piece will do. Very simple print and it came out nice. Um, you know, d design makes all the difference. Uh, it really does because this came out super duper clean. Bamboo matte red PLA, matte white over here and matte black. I just had those loaded in my P1P. Came off the plate in one big go. So it's like a, uh, if you're into magic cards and you take your decks around to play with other people, uh, it's one of, you know, it's for that. And that seems to be a lot of his designs are for that. But very cool print. I'm not sure what I'd price it for. I think if I recall correctly, this came out to, I did a heavy infill on it. It's quite heavy. Uh, I think it came out to like four or 500 grams, and, but it does it. it seems like it more. And it's a nice size, you know, it's very cool if you're a magic person. Uh, taking it around, probably, you know, kind of like a showpiece box, uh, but very cool model. I imagine this goes for at least 20, 30 bucks or something like that. I would think so. Maybe even 50. I don't know. Do Magic players have money? Never mind. No, no, they don't. <laughs> so very cool print. Check him out. Links in the description. Thank you again, Andrew, for that. And so the next print I have slated up for the Giga is this. So it's a uh, actually a pantograph. And so another kind subscriber reached out to me, told me they were making a product to uh, kind of serves both purposes. I have a, a small crypto channel as well um, that kind of could go either way. And so I'll probably plan to present that there, but also here because it is a 3D printed pantograph in the crypto world. Oftentimes people will use uh, the private keys for their wallet to, it's kind of a more secure way to keep it versus, you know, on your computer or whatever. You just like, a, you could put a seed phrase or the private keys to your wallet. And if, as long as you have those, you can always access it. And it's a super secure way to do it. The only problem is, is like you can't let anyone see it because they could steal your cryptocurrency without going too deep into the weeds on crypto stuff. Uh, but oftentimes people will just write it down. But if you have a fire or you spill Dr. Pepper on it, then you could lose those keys or that seed phrase. And so a lot of people will take to engraving them on something, something that's fireproof, like say metal. And so he had sent this over to me. It is a pantograph. That means you can make a... Uh, plate model of it or use a stencil and then you trace it out and these arms uh, kind of telegraph the the thing onto and engrave or route out a piece of metal and so if you have a metal seed phrase or private keys then you can put that in the safe you don't have to worry about it burning down so he sent me the files for it he sent me all the parts i needed i thought this is a really cool project and so I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's a lot of parts to print. I'm currently printing them on var my various printers. I'm going to do obviously a content on it. Uh, however, there is one very, very large part to this pantograph, the base plate by on which everything sits. And so it's, uh, he provides the STL for it. As you can see here, this has the screw holes and he suggested using MDF. And I'm like, well, why can't I just print it? Uh, because if I printed it in its full thick size, it would have been about four kilos <laughs> worth of filament on the Orange Storm Giga. So I've got it loaded up here. I reduced, squashed it down to 1.2 millimeters in thickness, basically a stencil that I can use to then cut a piece of MDF or wood or whatever. Um, that way I can have everything with precision, uh, where, know where the holes are versus trying to print this on a piece of paper. I don't know how else you would do it. Um, and so I'm not sure if he's going to be selling this printed as a kit. I know he's going to be selling the files link to his cults. 3d is in the description below. If you want to grab the files and do this yourself. Um, I don't know that it's really applicable for many people. I don't know how often you're trying to pantograph or engrave things, but a super cool little tool for me to have, you know, just kind of use it and throw it in the box. And if I need it one day, I can use it. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to be printing this on the Giga because it's 1.2 millimeters in height. That's three layers in total. The Giga should be able to handle it. Uh, I'm going to load that up and get it started. And for the rest of the components, I really wanted them to be precise. Uh, so I've employed my highest precision printers. I'm going to be doing the P1P, but also my Flash Forge. Flash Forge didn't sponsor this video, and I rarely talk about my 85M Pro. And it's been kind of a redheaded stepchild a bit because I've got it out here in the building. I really didn't have a place for it in the farm, but every print that I've put through this thing has been precise. It's been beautiful. Um, and I just, I felt, I felt compelled to like say positive things about it because you guys see the bamboos all the time, the Soval, the Giga, the, you know, all the other ones. 
And I've never really, I don't really talk about the 85 in Pro much. When it was in my office, I used it all the time because it was just right there. Uh, but since I moved out and you know removed clutter out of my office, I haven't been really using it much, but it, it makes beautiful prints every single time. Right now I'm doing some parts for that pantograph here in ABS. Might as well get some B-roll shots while we're at it, right? So looking really, really good. Again, thanks to Flashforge for sending that over. I know they got some, uh, some new stuff coming out, multi-material type things. But again, if you're looking for like, it's not the biggest printer, and that's probably one of the reasons like I don't default to it because it is a slightly smaller build plate. But again, hard nozzle, it can print basically anything, you know, without, minus the truly exotic stuff. Uh, in a nice tight little fully enclosed package. So I really like it. I wanted a high uh, precision uh, parts for this pantograph. And so I've got a lot of them going on there. When it's done, I'm gonna go back to the others. And also the S1 Pro, because I haven't really used it much because it's been loaded up with that nylon carbon fiber filament and I've just been too lazy to take it out. So I've loaded up some of the regular PLA, rapid PLA plus, and I'm printing some of the other parts here. Going pretty good. And this thing is fast, and I actually dialed the speed down by about 30% on all fronts just to make sure that I get a really good print out of this. It do, it, the prints come out great uh, considering the speed as well, so I'm thinking if I dial the speed down, maybe I'll get an even better result. So S1 Pro currently going on that, 85 in Pro going on that. We're gonna get the P1P going with some parts as well. I was gonna do that thing where I flip the 3D print and say, so that's all we have for today, and I dropped it. It's the Charmander piece. It just shattered into a million pieces. So that's all I got going on for today. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below, and if you'd be interested in that Pantograph device, uh, because I know he is selling it. It's not, I don't think he's gonna charge a lot for it. It's a lot of parts to print, and it's a very specialized tool. You have to buy a lot of screws and hex bolts and things like that. You also have to have a Dremel for it, and just luckily, I have one that would work for his, because I have the 8240. It's battery operated and because you're gonna need to route out a piece of metal. Um, you know, it doesn't do everything, but I can see it being done as a kit. Um, you know, mine, the MDF would be a lot of work, uh, but the 3D printed parts, the screws, the hex inserts, things like that, shouldn't be too hard to put together. If I was gonna print it and sell it as an actual physical kit and ship it to somebody, sans the Dremel, <sighs> Yeah, it's kind of a lot of work. I'd probably charge like 250 for it or something like that. But again, you're appealing to crypto people who potentially, you know, want to safeguard, you know, millions of dollars worth of uh, cryptocurrency. Then it may be a good thing for them, uh, you know, versus trying to like scratch out your uh, your seed phrase or your keys by hand on a tiny piece of metal is a good way to do it. So, you know, maybe there is potential there. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do and subscribe. Yeah, do that. Subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals. See you next time.